So good afternoon, everyone, and this is uh, lecture number three, and we are dealing with uh, Newton laws of motion. I think we have dealt with the first law of motion. Remember, yes or no? What does the first law of motion say? The first law of motion is basically law of inertia. It tells us that if there is no force acting on the body, the body will remain at rest, or the body will continue its uniform motion. Yes or no? Now, once I say that the body remains in, the, there is no force acting on the body, we can say this in a different way. And you can write the next heading, equilibrium. You can write the next heading, equilibrium. What do you mean by equilibrium? Simply saying, if the net force acting on the body is zero, the force acting on the body is zero, which implies the acceleration of the body is zero, you know that this state is known as the state of body is in equilibrium. This means that the body is in a state of equilibrium. Net force acting on a body is zero. The body is said to be in equilibrium. Now, when someone says that a body is in equilibrium, bodies could be in, at rest or moving with uniform velocity. In physics, if I talk about in physics, anything which is at rest is similar to anything which is moving with a uniform velocity. Physics cannot differentiate between a body at rest and a body moving with uniform velocity unless and until it is accelerated. If a body is accelerated, then the case becomes different. If the body is at rest, or the body is moving with uniform velocity. We always say that the body is in equilibrium. It does not make any difference to the body. Do we understand this? So, at rest, if I say the net force acting on the body is zero. Everyone understands this, yes or no? Now, if vector lead the force acting on the body is zero, that implies the force along x-axis would be zero. The x component would be zero. The force along y-axis would be zero. And the force along z-axis, z-axis will always will also be zero. When I say force along x-axis is zero, what does that mean? If there are some forces acting on the positive x-axis, there will be equal forces acting on the negative x-axis. So positive and negative axis will cancel each other out. If there are forces acting on positive y-axis and there are forces acting on negative y-axis, they also will cancel out. If there are forces acting on positive z-axis and negative z-axis, they also will cancel out. This is what we mean, net force is zero or force along x-axis, force along y-axis, they are zero. Do we understand this? Okay. Now, if you get any question, and you might get a question where the body is going to be in equilibrium, we'll have to do some uh, simple things. If you follow some simple steps, we would be able to find out the answer. So I'll give you those steps. Now, the question that you might encounter would not require because they would be pretty simple. But still, you if you understand these steps, you would be very comfortable in solving those problems. Have you noted this down, equilibrium, everything on the whiteboard? Note it down. Then you can write the next heading, steps to solve problems in equilibrium.
steps to solve problems in equilibrium. Now, since you are uh, neat uh, students, you might not require to do all this. The question that you are going to get are going to be pretty simple, but still just let us note them down so that if you can do them once or twice with your own hands, you would be able to solve the rest of the questions. Are we ready to write down the steps? Boys in the other class, are we ready, Beta? Ready, everyone? Okay, so these are the steps. The first step is definitely you will have a sketch of the problem. You can note down the sketch of the problem from the, from the question itself. The next step would be to draw a free body diagram. We only we already know how to draw a free body diagram. Yes or no? We know how to draw a free body diagram. Isolate the bodies, draw the diagram. Then we can choose a convenient coordinate system and resolve forces in X and Y. So we take one direction as X axis. We take one direction as Y axis and resolve the forces. I will tell you how to resolve the forces. Don't worry. Once we resolve all the forces, what you need to do? Since the body is in equilibrium, the net force along X axis would be zero. The net force along Y would be zero. That means whatever forces are there on the X axis, the same force will be there on, y, uh, on the negative X axis. You equate the two forces and you will get the results. There would be something that would be known. There would be something that would be unknown. You would be able to find out the known and the unknown from those equations. So I'll give you two minutes to write down these steps and then we will start solving problems based on this. Please let me know once you are done, Bacha. Completed, sir. Have we done this, beta? Other class? Completed, sir.
Okay, everyone has noted this down. Now, what do we do next? Let us try to apply this and uh, solve some question. We would be able to understand it quickly. I hope everyone has noted this down. You may not have to do so much of uh, thinking. If you just do simple, simple things correctly, you should be able to solve questions that are going to come in your exam. For example, this question. Here we have this uh, block. This block has a mass of 10 kg. Now this block is held by a string. You have to find what is the tension in this string. You have to find what is the tension in this string and I'll give you two minutes to do it. Find out the tension in this string. Sir, 100. Everyone got this? Yes, sir. Well done. How did you get it? How did you get it? Tell me first. How did you get it? Yes. So, here what we got to do, we just need to follow the steps. The sketch, draw the sketch. Sketch is already there. You don't have to draw it. Then you have to draw the free body diagram of the sketch. There's only one body here. If you draw the free body diagram, the weight on this is 100. 10 multiplied by G is 100. There's only one force acting on it in the upward direction. T. Now you have to choose your axis. You can choose X axis like this, but there's nothing on the X axis. Don't worry about that. Then we choose your Y axis. The body is in equilibrium, so upward forces should equate the downward forces. So your tension will become 100 Newton. So this is how you must do any problem that comes here. Everybody understood this, how this is done? Can I have raise hands? These are simple problems of equilibrium and what we got to do is just follow the steps and everything else will be taken care of automatically by the question itself. Can I give you another question? Okay, this one. And I hope that you are able to do this question. I always say that uh, new students, whether they are first year or second year, they are better than the JE ones. And this is the time that you can prove it. Now, this is here. A block of mass M is suspended by a rope from a fixed point, as shown in the figure. Another rope is tied at the end Q. It is put horizontally with a force F. PQ makes an angle theta. Then the tension in the string is how much? Tension in the string is how much? Or 
plus uh, when the question is like this. So basically what is known to you is this value of F. If F is known to you, you have to find the tension in the string. Uh, so F is known, the thing that is unknown, I can also find, I can also ask you what is the value of this mass? So I have added one more question here. Apart from the tension, find the value of M. So there are two questions that I've given you. One question is from the question itself, book itself. The other question I have made for you. Can you do this for me? Yes or no? So what are the two things that you have to find out, Bacha? F is given to you, all right. F is given to you, all right. This angle theta is given to you, all right. You have to find the value of tension in the string. Which string? Tension in the string PQ. This is P and this is Q. You have to find the tension in this string and you have to find out the weight of the, the mass of the block M. I'll give you two minutes to do this. Yes, anyone, sir. anyone, sir? Sir. Yes, beta? B, sir. F by sine theta. I've got one answer. Well done. What about the others? Did we get any answers, Bacha? No one got any answer. Apart from girls. Okay, F by sine theta, that is the answer that uh, we have got. How did you do it? Uh, there are two questions that I asked, Bacha, if you remember, there are two questions that I asked. So what is the answer for the second question? The first is definitely right, F by sine theta is correct. What about the second question? Anyone got the answer for the second question? You got the answer for the first question, all right. Congratulations, how did you do it? Yes, anyone. Okay, 
so let us solve it again there is only one body here this body is uh, this one if i draw the free body diagram if i uh, if i draw the free body diagram of let us say this point what are the forces acting on this point one force is this f everyone sees this yes or no the other force is this tension t this tension t then the other force will be acting that will be equal to the weight of this block mg yes or no we understand this now this point is an equilibrium i will have to see the x axis and y axis i can make this axis as your y axis and this axis as your x axis this force f is lying along the x axis no problem this weight mg lying along the y axis no problem the only problem is this t what about this t this t does not lie in the x and y axis so i will have to resolve it how do i resolve it if this angle is theta beta it's a small mass if this angle is theta this angle is also theta so if i resolve it by vectors this component will become t cos of theta and this component will become t sin of theta everyone knows this how to resolve these forces cos theta sin theta then the forces should equate my dear friends if i look at these two forces on the x axis they must equate they must equate that means t sin theta should be equal to f so from there you can find out the value of t t is f divided by sin theta that was the question that was asked and the answer is pretty simple the next thing is can you find out the value of the weight or a mass mg so if i equate equations on the y axis weight mg weight mg must be equal to t cos theta if i write that equation here t cos theta would be equal to mg from here i can find out the value of m m will be equal to t cos theta divided by g we already know the value of t i can put that the value of t here i can get the value of m do we understand this yes or no so the only point here is if you apply the equations correctly you should be able to get the answer can i give you another question here okay remember the questions that are going to come are very simple if you just concentrate hard enough you should be able to find the answers let us look at the next question question number 2 let me make this system here like this this is a block of mass m it is hanging from a string and this is an unknown mass question mark this is an unknown mass to stop this from slipping i am applying a force f here i'm applying a force f here you have to find out what is the value of this unknown mass how much is this unknown mass if the system stays in equilibrium if the system is in equilibrium can you find out the value of the block which is hanging Two minutes, you will get.
Anyone got any answer? I'll give you one minute more. Remember, up till now, there were only one, one mass. Now we have got two mass. Doesn't matter. You will have to write the equation for two bodies. Nothing else better. Don't worry. Shall I do it? Okay. So how are we supposed to do this? Let me call this mass. I have said this M. Let me call this mass as X. This mass is X. Right? Now let me draw the free body diagram of this mass. 10X would be the weight of this body going downwards yes or no we understand this then there would be tension t here there would be tension t remember tension always pulls then i can draw the free body diagram of this block mg and this is normal reaction n now remember both the blocks are in equilibrium this block is in equilibrium if this block in e is in equilibrium i can write the equation along y-axis if I write the equation along y-axis for this block, what would I get? I would get N is equal to mg. The value of this normal reaction is mg. No one has asked me the value of normal reaction, but I can find out the value of normal reaction. Do we understand this, yes or no? Now, if I look at the x direction, in the x direction, we have T here and F here. The body is in equilibrium, so I can write the equilibrium equation for the x direction. This f would be equal to t. This would be the equation along the x-axis. Do we understand this? Then I come back to this block. This t is here and 10x is here, so I can write from this. I can write t is equal to 10x, but t is also equal to f, so I can write 10x is equal to f for x the value of this block will be f divided by 10. This is how I can get the value of this x the hanging mass. Do we understand this? Yes sir. Okay. I'll give you two minutes to note this down. Completed, sir. Everyone completed? Yes, sir. Then you have this question to worry about. In this question, I again have two blocks. One whose mass is known, 5 kg. The other which is hanging, whose mass is not known. The system is in equilibrium. I did not mention it, so I just write the system is in equilibrium. 
I have asked two things. The first is the normal reaction on 5 kg block. Do you understand the meaning of normal reaction? The first is the normal reaction on the 5 kg block. And the second one is the value of M, the hanging block. So I'll give you two minutes to find this out. Professor, answer. Yes, beta, you got the answer? Yes, the normal reaction, Professor. Normal reaction oh. is? Sorry. 50. No, normal reaction is not 50. Okay. I'll give you one more minute to think about this. The only thing that is different here is one is like this. I'll tell you something about this question. And whenever a question of this thing comes, if I draw the free body diagram of this block, oops, wrong color, let me do this color. If I draw the free body diagram of this block, this will be M into G. Uh, let me write 10 M, G is 10. So this is 10 M, the weight of this block going downwards and the tension in the string T upwards, right? Now this block is in equilibrium. So this T and this 10 M should equate, yes or no? So the value of this T, you write this equation here, the value of this T is equal to 10 M. So I know T in terms of M, but that is not my entire problem. I've got one more body here on the other side. So I draw the free body diagram of that body. This is 5 kg. So weight is downwards, 50 Newtons. Then the normal reaction is coming like this. And now, in the case of the body which was hanging, I had taken my x-axis as horizontal and y-axis as vertical. But I can't do the same for this block because this block is not going to move like this or like this. This globe, Bob is going to move like this. Do you understand this? So it's better to take its x-axis and y-axis like this. You should take its x-axis in this direction and you should take its y-axis in this direction. Do we understand this? So this becomes the x-axis and this becomes the y-axis. Anyone understands this? Both are perpendicular. Now, whenever you have this wedge like this, you always take it like this. One more thing that you must remember now then, your normal reaction will always come along y-axis. But your weight will come vertically downwards, you can't change it. So you will have to resolve your weight into X and Y. So your weight will always, oops, wrong color. So your weight can be resolved one along this direction and the other one, one along this direction. Remember that this component which comes along the X axis is always equal to weight multiplied by sine theta. Here it is 30 degrees. So this component is always mg sine theta and this component is always mg cos theta. Here m is mg is 50. So this component will become 50 cos 30. Can you remember this small thing everyone? Whenever you have a wedge which is kept like this, you will have to resolve weight into two components. One is along x, one is along y. The component along x will always come downwards. And it will always come equal to mg or weight multiplied by sine 30. Now, if I write the equation of this block, it is not moving along y-axis. So on y-axis, I have n. And on y-axis, I also have 50 cos 30. 
So I can write the equation along y axis. The equation along y axis will be n will be equal to 50 cos 30. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. So your answer in this case will become 25 newtons. So that is your first answer. Normal reaction is 50 cos 30. Do we understand this? Yes or no? Then it is also not moving along the x-axis. So you can write the equation along x-axis. On x-axis, one side we have 50 sine 30. On the other side, I have not drawn the tension T. So this is the tension T. So on one side, I have 50 sine 30. And on the other side, I have T. So I can write this green equation here. T will be equal to 50 multiplied by sine 30. That is half. So this will be equal to 25. This was 25 root 3. I forgot to write root 3. This is 25. Do we understand this, everyone? Once I get the value of T as 25, I can put the value of T here. So I can get 25 is equal to 10M or M will be equal to 2.5. Do we understand what we have done here? Do we understand what we have done here? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Now, can you solve a question on your own if I give you? Yes, sir. Okay. Note this down and I'll give you another question. Are we ready for the next question? So here also the bodies are in equilibrium. You have to find out the value of this block M. How much is the weight of, how much is the mass of the hanging block M? I'll give you two minutes to solve this. Anyone got the answer?
Shall I wait? Are you trying? Okay. Got the answer? Okay, I'm not able to hear you correctly, but I think you would have got the correct answer. Let me go ahead and solve it for you. I will draw the free body diagram. This is M into G. G is 10. So it becomes 10 M. This is tension T. This is tension T. This is weight Mg. So 100 into G is 100. Uh, 10 into G is 100. This is the normal reaction N. Yes or no? Then as I told you, I, I'll have to resolve this into two components. That will become 100 sine 30. Sine 30 is half. Yes or no? And this component will become 100 cos 30. Cos 30 is root 3 by 2. Now I can make the equation along y-axis. Along y-axis, what would I get, Bacha? I don't need it. But I can write the equation. N will be equal to 50 root 3. Yes or no? Then I can write the equation along x-axis for this. Upward is t. Downward is 100 into half. So this equation here becomes t is equal to 50 newtons. Then I can look at this one. This is 10 m. This is t. So I can also write t equals 10 m. t is 50 and t is m. t is 10 m. From these two equations, from these two equations combined, I can find out the value of m. A value of m would be 5 kgs. Do you understand this, yes or no, everyone? Okay. So this is all about the problems on equilibrium that uh, we had to do. They were quite simple. And we can get one or more problems on this type. Okay, shall we move ahead? Now, if the force is zero, the bodies are in equilibrium. What will happen? If the force is not zero, the body will not remain in equilibrium, yes or no? Then comes your Newton's second law of motion and that is the heading that you will write what will you write newton's second law of motion newton's second law of motion is the next thing that you are going to write newton's second law of motion Newton's second law of motion. What does Newton's second law of motion state? Now I can say this in various ways. The first way is the rate of change of linear momentum. The rate of change of linear momentum of a particle is equal to or directly proportional to the force acting on the particle. That means I can write force as rate of change of momentum 
rate of change of momentum or i can say if force acts on a body or if there is a net force on the body the body accelerates how do you find the acceleration of the body how do you find the acceleration of the body the acceleration of the body can be found by force divided by that mass or i can write f is equal to m into a so you can write newton's second law of motion in this way or you can write newton's second law of motion in this way do we understand this the rate of change of momentum is equal to the force acting on the body f is equal to dp by dt or you can write it as f is equal to ma okay Everyone has noted this down. I can give you a small example on this small question. I hope you can solve this. I'll give you two minutes. So this is the question: A vehicle of ten kg is moving with a velocity of five meter per second. To stop it in one by ten seconds, how much force is required? Do you have two minutes to solve this? Option C, sir. Option C, we have an answer straight away. Well done. How did you do it? How did you do it, Bacha? I'll give you one more minute to do it. So, how do you do it? To know force is the rate of change of momentum. Let me not write vector. Let me just write it in scalar. Rate of change of momentum. Yes or no? So, it basically becomes d by dt of m into v, momentum. Or you can write it as d by dt of m into v, total change in velocity divided by total time, v minus u divided by t. Yes or no? The final velocity, we have to stop it. So the final velocity becomes zero. The initial velocity is 5 meter per second the mass is 100 kgs and the time is 1 by 10 seconds so i can if i put the values here 
100 multiplied by 0 minus 5 divided by 1 by 10 it is not divided by 10 it is divided by 1 by 10 so 10 comes in the numerator my dear friends and therefore the answer is not 50 but the answer is 5000 do we understand this minus 500 divided by 1 by 10 not 10 and that is why the answer was a slightly wrong one wrong one because you divided or multiply wrongly do we understand this yes sir so we'll continue with this newton's second law of motion in our next class i hope you have understood what we have done today we have, today we have covered equilibrium newton's first law of motion and we have moved on to newton's second law of motion we will be doing this in the next class take care and have a nice day bye bye God bless you all.